Hello and welcome to Chocolate for Breakfast. I made a comment on a previous video um, about fruit um, and I mentioned in the comment that I made that it, um, concerning fruit um, is the only rule that I actually really have. Um, and I'd, again, I don't like the word rules, so maybe let's say rule of thumb uh, to make it sound a bit lighter. Um, and I'm actually going to talk to you about fruit and fruit juice. Now, the thing about fruit, and in, in the previous video, video, I said fruit should always be eaten when you're in a fasting state. So I mean by that, perhaps first thing in the morning, if that's what you like, but definitely outside of meals. What's important to know is that if you eat uh, animal protein, it takes up to four or five hours to digest before your stomach is empty, okay? If you eat um, a more vegetarian style of meal, you're gonna need three to four hours before your stomach is empty. And I would definitely advise you know, this is one of the ones I'm actually, in a sense, telling you what to do. And obviously, again, what you do afterwards is kind of up to you. But, you know, listen on and make your, your own mind up once you have the information. <clears throat> the thing about eating fruit, and I'm going to come to fruit juice afterwards. I'm going to talk first about the fruit. The thing about the fruit is that... If you have, let's call them globally, solid foods already in your stomach, traditionally, we think of a healthy dessert, a dessert where we would have a piece of fruit at the end of the meal, and we consider that to be healthy. And I'm actually going to tell you that it is anything but healthy for the simple reason that the fruit normally passes through the stomach in 20 minutes. Now, if you've got solid food already in your stomach, what happens is the fruit gets stuck, it gets trapped, and then it ferments the amount of time that it's in your stomach. And you think, well, okay, what's so bad about that? What's really bad about that is that, first of all, the fermentation makes the fruit uh, into uh, something similar to if you drunk a, uh, a, a large quantity of alcohol. The effect on the pancreas, once more, and alcohol is responsible for this as well because of the high sugar content in the alcohol, is to provoke a high insulin production. And we already have discussed the problem of this high insulin production. And the lipogenesis uh, that's also uh, uh, induced by this insulin production. Um, so the other problem, and actually somebody was kind enough to post an article about this um, in on the Facebook group. There have been studies recently done that have shown, now I've read these studies and what's not specified in these studies is whether the people um, had their stomachs empty when they were having the fruit or not. It's not clear in the study and I would like to actually read further studies to actually know what the differences are. But what they have um, uh, deduced from these studies, what they have concluded, is that people that have a high fruit diet actually have a level of uric acid that is far higher than people who don't have a high fruit diet. Now, I personally suspect that the subjects are eating fruit at the end of meals or with other food. Um, the problem being with that is it's attacking your liver. And we have cases of people who don't drink any alcohol, but who have fruit regularly at the end, regularly at the end of a meal. And they end up with liver cirrhosis, just like any alcoholic would. And then we're going into 
liver failure. And if you've got liver failure, well, you know, that's it. <laughs> You're done. Um, this is attacking our vital organs. And this is something you absolutely have to be aware of. Fruit always when your stomach is empty. And like I say, either first thing in the morning and at least 20 minutes before you have anything else to eat, or four to five hours after having animal protein, three to four hours after having vegetable protein. And I always go to the top level. One of the things that you can possibly do to get around this, in a sense, is to actually cook the fruit. Um, the cooking process breaks down the enzymes, and so the fermentation process is greatly reduced. I'm not convinced that it's completely eliminated, but it is, in fact, greatly reduced. Um, the problem for me with the cooking process, the cooking of fruit, is when it's cooked it has a higher glycemic index a higher gi than the raw fruit okay um now i've not really gone into a great deal of detail about the glycemic index if you take maltose for example maltose pure sugar has a glycemic index of 110. um green beans or broccoli have a glycemic index of around 15 okay so it's very very low fruit has a gi of around 30 in its raw state depending on the fruit if you take a banana you've got a gi of 65 okay so bananas are maybe something you want to kind of take care of i personally am fairly attentive to the fact that all the foods that I'm eating have a GI of less than 50 or no more than 50. And I arrange what I eat, um, also taking that into account. Now we'll go into detail on that uh, as we go. Um, so the raw fruit is around 30. When you're cooking it, we're getting a GI of 50, 60, 70, depending on the fruit. So even though the fermentation is limited you're still getting a high insulin production from the fact of having cooked the fruit so like i say the basic rule of thumb is um, the fruits outside of meal times and what i sometimes do particularly in the summer if the weather is hot in the evening i will actually have a meal of fruit it will be my evening meal and again i don't particularly limit the quantities but it can be actually very refreshing so this brings me on to fruit juice <clears throat> in a very general manner the packaged fruit juice that we can get in the supermarket and i here i'm actually going to to talk whether it be um, the, the, the supermarket uh, brand or whether this is the organic brand, this is the same thing that's, that, that is going to be in the product, is that the, uh, by the time the fruit is processed, okay, that it's pressed or uh, uh, what's the word, mashed or whatever, the fruit... You know it, it takes quite a long time before it actually gets to the packet and then before it gets to the supermarket and then before it gets to your fridge with all of that first of all you're not going to have any vitamins left as soon as you cut a vegetable you're already losing part of the vitamins that are actually in the vegetable the vitamins you know <laughs> they basically go away on the knife i'm not saying to not cut vegetables but is just to make you aware of certain things. Um, the fruit juice is has practically no vitamins left at all. So when they're selling these products to products to us, saying you know orange juice and it's full of vitamin C, the only vitamin C that might actually eventually still be from the original fruit is so limited. 
and they're they're you know they've got on the packet you know uh vitamin c uh, 50 percent or i don't know whatever the percent percentages are i don't actually buy any fruit juice anymore and, and you'll understand why in a moment um a lot of the time they're adding in ascorbic acid which is artificial vitamin c to actually lift up the levels so that they can sell this to you as a healthy drink um <clears throat> the other problem with the fruit juice in in the supermarket in the packaging is that the level of acidity is really really high and very often even in the pure freshly pressed you know that's what's written on the bottle or on the the carton of of juice freshly pressed very often they are actually adding sugar into this to get rid of the acid taste um i know for example my my daughter systematically throws up if she drinks orange juice now i think there's also another reason for that and i will talk about that in a future video as well she can't drink it um and i believe part of that is due to the fact that the acidity level is so very high i would say probably the only exception and i would actually say this is the only exception i make is pomegranate juice because pomegranate juice is basically the seeds and they're just taken out squashed a bit and put into the bottle okay and i do take organic pure pomegranate juice and i'll uh, be talking about pomegranate juice and the amazing properties of this fruit um, in future videos so we know that there's perhaps added sugar we know that there's perhaps added vitamins and uh, in europe they're not obliged on the labeling to actually say what's in it they don't have to put all of the ingredients so they can actually get away with quite a lot of stuff um, and we, we're not aware of it the other option is to actually press the fruit yourself but in my way of thinking, you know, if you're going to take the trouble to cut the fruit up and put it in the mixer, if that's what you do, or, you know, press it with the machine or with the manual thing, you know, in my mind, why not just eat the fruit? It then has everything in it. The fruit is made... Um, you've got the fibers in the fruit. Why take only one part of that fruit and throw the rest away? It seems kind of silly when you think about it. And I would kind of just like to add that the most natural drink that we have is water. And water has been around practically since the beginning of the earth. And before the last century or so, water is what people drank because they didn't have anything else. You know, they would go to the well and they would drink the water. And in some countries, water is such a precious uh, item to, to, to be able, you know, they don't have enough. And we are there and we are, you know, pressing our fruit juices and you know and I, yeah i mean I'm, I'm guilty of drinking too much tea um i'm sorry you can take the take me out of britain but you can't take britain out of me um <laughs> i drink too much tea um but water is the real natural drink and it's the best way to rehydrate um your body is pure natural water um, and again just to come back to the fruit juice thing recent in recent years a very uh, big uh, food company brought out uh, a drink that was mixed it was fruit juice mixed with milk now I don't know if you've ever had a glass of milk and added orange juice to it if you've never done this try it at home 
you'd be astonished to see what happens to the milk. Now, again, this is presented as a healthy option. Milk is one of the things that, uh, and I will be talking about milk. Um, there's just so many things to be said about it. I'm not going to talk about it here. Um, milk should, in a sense, be avoided. We're not made to drink it. And this is mixed. Milk is a solid food. Huh? When babies are born, they have milk. And milk is food, solid food in a liquid form, perhaps, but it's still animal protein. And they're mixing a fruit juice with animal protein. And they're selling that as something healthy. And don't get me onto sodas, which are, in my mind, I just think soda, pure sugar. Okay? So, have a think about this. Now you have the information. You can make up your own mind. The only exception I would perhaps make to the no eating fruit at the end of a meal rule is perhaps red fruit because they don't get trapped in the same way as other fruits do um, and they don't thus ferment in the same way as other fruits do but they still have a higher glycemic index and if you're on a weight loss um, let's say crusade for want of a better word again um, if you're on a weight loss if you're looking to lose weight I would say that even having red fruit at the end of a meal is maybe not the ideal solution um, but as an option why not why not um, strawberries and cream though I wouldn't go there personally but on occasions yes I would not on a regular basis so I hope this has been helpful. Um, Facebook group, Facebook page, Twitter, Google Plus, my email address is down below. Please comment, subscribe. <laughs> I learned that today. You can subscribe. So I'm going to be asking people to subscribe from now on. Do subscribe if you wish to do so. And um, I'll be speaking to you very soon. Thank you so much for listening and here's to your very good health. Bye-bye.